Good morning to you. This is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture coming to you from my Portland, Oregon, one quarter acre food forest. I'm standing in my front yard, which is the smallest portion of the garden. And I wanted to have a little, not a rant exactly, but a little conversation about what is a food forest. So recently in a regenerative agriculture group, a gentleman had some very strong feelings but using the term food forest and he said well this is a trendy trendy term and you all should just be saying orchard because that's what it is and i think that that is a fundamental misunderstanding of what a food forest is so i wanted to clarify what is a food forest where does that term come from and why is it not just some new trendy thing um, as if that were a bad thing to have something trending in agriculture um, and why it is that a food forest is different than other forms of agriculture. So let's get started. It's very sunny today. Sometimes my camera struggles a little bit to focus, so I'm gonna do the best I can. So what is a food forest? Food forests were starting to come into fashion over 30 years ago. And first, let me just say, if something is trendy and there is a new catchphrase a new concept that is hooking people into growing food and getting them interested in growing food, I think that is a great thing. That's not a bad thing. But I also wanna clarify, this is not a new term. So in, in the UK, I believe about 30 years ago, Martin Crawford, you can Google him, he began to grow and plant a food forest. And his is one of the most well-known, most established food forests. So Martin Crawford now has what you would call a mature established food forest. And he has some great videos. So I have an 11 year old food forest, so it is still in the process of maturing. So how is a food forest not an orchard? Let's talk about that. So an orchard, by definition, is just fruit or nut trees planted for human harvest. They're typically planted in rows, typically monoculture, where you might have multiple varieties of apples, but they're all apples. And not that you can't have plums mixed in or what have you. And they're typically planted in straight rows. And there might be a cover crop, like vetch or rye. And there might be some insectary plants planted along the edges, like lavender. But typically, it's a monoculture of fruit trees. And they're weeded and sprayed and what have you. A food forest is fundamentally different because it consists of eight layers of different kinds of life, not including animal life. So in a food forest, you start with your canopy layer, and these can be your productive fruit trees or nut trees, particularly nut trees, because they tend to get big, but it also can be support species. So for me here, I have this purple robe locust, which is young and getting established, and it is going to be a canopy tree for the time being. It is a nitrogen fixer insectiary plant and it's here to provide some shade. And it is the big tree in my front yard, okay? It's not gonna be here forever, but it's here right now. So those big tall trees, they can be a fruit tree. You could grow a standard fruit tree. I have a semi-dwarf plum behind me. So it is also a canopy tree technically where I am. And then below that you have the sub canopy and often these are your fruit trees. So here I have a peach. This is an Oregon curl free peach. I have um, dwarf apples. I have pawpaws, which eventually will become a canopy layer as they get bigger. And below that you have the shrub layer and in the shrub layer those also can be fruit or food producing so i have a bush cherry here i have a june berry we have fijoa currants i have a little bit left on my pink currant here i 
so that's our shrub layer. So we've now gone through our first three layers and now we're getting into the herbaceous layers. So we have herbaceous plants like comfrey, which I just cut back. Oh, I gotta go through a spider web here. Excuse me, spider. I just cut back and you can see my comfrey's already coming back very, very quickly. We have the root layer where you grow things like perennial leeks and parsnips and daikon, which is a great cover crop. And I consider things like rhubarb to be uh, a root layer as well because they have a giant big root, even though we harvest them for the stems. Then we have what are called the ground cover layer. And that's things like all of these native strawberries here. I would consider dandelions a ground cover layer. Up here to the herbaceous layer, we have some cranes bell geraniums. So then after that, what you get is the vine layer. And that can be tricky in a home garden or any garden. That includes things like rambling roses. It includes things like I consider my cane fruits to be a vine layer. So that would be things like black cap raspberries. It would be things like my triple crown blackberry here. It would also be things like the hardy kiwis that I have in the backyard. And it would be things like clematis. Okay, so the last layer is one you might not see all the time, and that is going to be the fungal layer in the soil. And those can be crops that you are growing, like Strafaria rugosa annulata or morale mushrooms, or it can just be beneficial fungi in the soil. I would argue there is a ninth layer, which would be the microbial life in the soil beyond the fungal life, but um, that's sort of a given. You have to have that to have a food forest. Okay, so that's the difference between a food forest and an orchard. In a food forest, we have a complex system seeking to mimic and learn from and harness things that are happening in nature and the layers that we get in nature so that we have the maximum diversity and the maximum interconnected support between plants. Some other key elements of a food forest are you don't need to replant it every year. It is perennial agriculture. It is something where you might interplant annuals or have self-sowing annuals. There's a lot of emphasis on self-sowing annuals in a food forest. I should mention too, the term forest garden is interchangeable with the term food forest. I think in Europe and the UK, they tend to say forest garden more often and in the United States and Canada, we tend to say uh, food, food forest more than forest garden. Interchangeable terms. So the, there is also what is called silvopasture and that is different. Silvopasture is where you are harnessing a forest tree-based system to forage your livestock. And you can have livestock in a forest garden, but the main point of a forest garden is fruit and veg production or fiber or lumber. And the main point in a silvopasture is that you have sustainable tree-based forage for um, goats and cattle, or you rotate your hogs in through your oak um, stand so they can eat acorns or filberts or things like that. So that's the difference. For me, um, I obviously can't have any of those things because I'm in the city, but I do have chickens and ducks. So the overarching term that covers silvopasture and forest gardening and food forest is agroforestry, which just means a land management system of crops or livestock based around trees with trees as the foundation. You could throw orchard into that group as well, but it's not, um, it's not the, the same thing. An orchard is not interchangeable with a food forest. So I hope that clears that up a little bit. And again, I think it's really important that we in permaculture or in gardening 
that we don't get pedantic and that we are excited about new terms and new understandings and learning more about the interconnectedness of plants and the soil and learning more about how nature regenerates things on her own and how we can take and learn from that and apply it to our gardens. So I don't think it's a bad thing when new terms come up. I think it's a good thing when new terms come up and our understanding grows so that we can be more resilient, successful gardeners. We can feed ourselves and our community more efficiently and less extractively, more regeneratively. So again, want to know more about forest gardens and food foresting, check out the expert on it, Martin Crawford. Again, you're looking at a 30 year old food forest for him. And for me, you're looking at a 11 year old one, which I know is, um, it's, it's a lot of investment. 11 years is a long time. Um, but I would say mine is, is, uh, partially mature. You can look up in permaculture the seven eight layers of uh, polyculture and gilding because that is the basis of how we grow things in food foresting and I hope that gives you a little look at how a garden can be so different from what we're normally used to and how utilizing and understanding the complexity of biodiversity and abundance in nature can help us design systems that use those elements in our own garden and have a far more complex productive and resilient system than just an orchard okay i hope you enjoyed this video and i will be back tomorrow thanks